They say, we don't know, we just want a side drawer. I say, well, I can't help you. You need to know what you want. I need to know what result you're expecting from me. What if I make a 2D side drawer that is also a racing game? Would you accept that? And they'll be like, well, now we, well, I'd say we'd want a Mario clone. We want a game that looks like Mario or looks like Street Fighter, let's say. Like, yeah, now you're telling me what you want. You know, now you're telling me. Now, not before that. There, I mean, a, a client comes and uh, says, I want a fighting game. Okay, what kind? There are many fighting games. 3D, 2D. Do you want a fighting game? That, I mean, fighting game, a jet fighter game is also a fighting game. What fighting game do you want? Tell me. If you do not know what you want, how can I, how can I give you something if you do not know what you want? Reject clients that do not know anything about your field and the solutions that you can provide. So I expect clients to have an idea of what kind of result they will get. If the client orders a website, they should know just a few features or how a website works, at least something that they know that there is supposed to be a navigation bar, there's supposed to be a logo on top, and how websites work, and uh, the importance of being dynamic, that is if the browser is um, is minimized, maximized, how will the website perform, things like that. And if the client doesn't know, I try to explain it to them. But they should, generally speaking, have a little idea of how websites work and how what they're asking for, how it works, just a little bit. If they do not know anything about what you're providing or what you will provide, don't work with such clients because you will probably end up spending 80% of your time explaining to them why you're doing what you're doing, which is a waste of time. L learn when to fire a client if you feel that like the project will fail anyway due to poor communication, improper definition of scope of work, or bad behavior. So any of these points, if you feel like the project will fail due to poor communication, client does not respond for a month, the improper definition of scope of work, the client does not tell exactly what they want, or bad behavior. So bad behavior if the client is rude, just, just fire them, don't tolerate that. Next slide. Define the scope of work. Now, that scope of work, you see, it's, 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 uh, I used caps lock for that because I want you to focus on that. Scope of work is important because you should know what you're doing and what you're being paid for, and the client should know what he is paying you to do. So if the scope of work is not clear, that means that things are vague. The client may include something during the project which was not which was not supposed to be part of the project. They can immediately add that, and then the entire project will go into something called development hell. That is not something that you want. The scope of work should be well-defined. I want A, B, C, D, and we are going to do A, B, C, D using these methods. And that's it. If, if you try to add anything else, I will charge you for that. And uh, there's like no, don't compromise. Don't, uh, don't do that. Only accept work if the client agrees to pay per module. That means that if the project is, uh, it requires task A, B, C, D, E, F, G to be done, just charge for A and B. Say we are going to do task A and B first, that is a module. That is one module that is, that is like a module which will, uh, which will fit in to C and D. So we'll work in a modular fashion. So if, the, like for example, if you're writing an article or a, or a paper of some kind, and especially if you're writing an article, say I'm going to write 200 words and I'm going to charge you for that. Then I'm going to write the other 200 words. I'm going to charge you for that. I'm going to complete one chapter, going to charge you for that. I'm going to write the second chapter, going to charge you for that. So that way you will also get an idea of how the client will work with you and whether he is serious about paying you or not. Immediately reject anything that is outside the scope of work unless the client wishes to pay you for the extra work and it doesn't affect the project in any negative manner. So for example, if we have decided that we are going to write a book, chapter one, chapter 10, 10 chapters, but the client says, I want uh, chapter, uh, I want 11 chapters and this chapter three should be in between chapter uh, chapter two and three right now, so it's going to be three and four then. You, you can say, well, I can do that. I've written the entire book, uh, uh, you, uh, like, after I've 
written a book from chapter 1 to 10, and I can't fit another chapter in like that. That's going to ruin the entire book. I, I can't do that. Th that. That's impossible. So you can say that and tell the client, I'm sorry, this is not what we agreed to do. Uh, if, if we do that, even if you pay me, you, you will end up getting something that you do not want. And I can I mean, I'll have to charge you double because I'll have to change all the chapters based on that new chapter. Next slide. What are the best platforms to start learning new skills? Udemy, YouTube, Coursera, Skillshare, Khan Academy, LinkedIn Learning, edX, and Open edX, Teachable. These are the platforms that I use. I use Udemy primarily because Udemy has uh, courses they are continuously updated, and Udemy is also premium, so I like Udemy. And on YouTube, if you're looking for a specific problem that you want to solve, somebody may have come up with a solution. So you can search for Udemy. Uh, so you can search on YouTube for that problem, uh, and hopefully you'll get the results. And YouTube is free, uh, but Udemy is not. But you should only focus on Udemy and YouTube as you can learn new skills and you can also complete the course and have proof that you've completed that course because they give you a certificate. Next slide. Figure out which platform will work for you. So figure out which platform attracts clients that require the skills that you have. So for example, on Upwork.com, I I, I'm not successful on Upwork.com because the job posts over there are cross posts. So they have posted them on other websites and they also post them on Upwork. They're not serious about hiring game developers on Upwork. They may hire game developers on some other website. You should learn which platform will actually be the best for the skills that you offer. And you can find that out by reading articles or researching on the internet. Consider the workflow of the platforms. So based on your personal personality type, there are certain platforms that have a workflow that will suit you. Other platforms may have a workflow that does not suit you. For example, if you must have a video call with the client, must have a video call with the client, Upwork is probably the best platform because Fiverr does not allow video calls, but Upwork does. So if for some reason you, uh, you believe that you cannot explain everything, everything through text, then Upwork is probably the best, best option for you. Learn how platforms help clients connect to freelancers. Platforms may offer a solution that suits your personality type. So Fiverr has a different way of connecting clients to freelancers. Upwork has a different method. It, you have to choose one that suits you. On Fiverr, clients find you. On Upwork, you have to find the clients. Consider how many freelancers are already working on a platform and get an idea of their skills. See if you can offer better quality solutions than them. So if you have to get an idea of, uh, what the, of, of what freelancers are doing currently on a platform, just take a look at, look at those freelancers, maybe create an order with them or place an order and, uh, or just work with them, create something like a fake, fake, uh, fake problem and try to find out what they do. And if you believe you can provide a better solution than them, you can actually copy them and just provide a better solution. It has worked tremendously for some of my friends. Take a look at reviews or simply get a feel of each platform for a period of at least three months before deciding to make one platform your main platform. So for me, it took about five months, but uh, generally speaking, after working for three months, you will get an idea of which, pla which platform is working best for you. And that should be your main platform then. The other platforms also work on them, but there should be one main. Next slide. How long does it take to learn a new skill and start earning? You will usually make your first $100 in the first six months after you have learned a particular skill. This is totally according to my experience. However, results vary based on your platform. So I said 100 because I'm not a get-rich-quick scammer. The $100 is actually, is actually a very good amount in six months if you're starting because you'll be, you'll, be, uh, you'll be facing a lot of competition. You will not have an established reputation on that platform. So it'll take you about six months. I've seen people that uh, find uh, long-term clients on Upwork within the first six months that pay them $1,000, $2,000 per month. It happens, but it's rare. Or if you have worked for like a, some big company and then now you're working on Upwork.com, probably.